Hello everyone. Today uh, we're going to discuss uh, analysis of circuits that uh, include more than one diode. As you may imagine, if we don't have any idea about uh, which one of the diodes would be on or off, then we actually have to deal with uh, many different cases. And in other words, we have to assume uh, that each diode could be on or on or off, and for each diode, therefore two more circuits needs to be uh, analyzed until we reach a point of conclusion which one of those cases actually would be workable for the circuit. Now a lot of times uh, a quick uh, like analysis uh, just on on uh, in your head would be actually enough to invalidate some of these uh, assumptions and I'm going to give you examples for this specific circuit. So let's start uh, labeling the circuit. So there's a note here. There's a note here. There'd be one here. One more here. And therefore, for the currents, as for the current goes, this is 5 milliamp. We're going to assume I1 here. So in KCL, we're going to have the same current I1 there. And then I2. And finally, I2 down here. Now that said, if I write KCL for this node, uh, 5 milliamp plus I1 would be equal to I2. Now one of those four cases, uh, in one of those four cases in terms of operation of the diode, both of these diodes would be assumed off, but we can quickly uh, conclude for the circuit that that's actually not a workable uh, assumption because then in that case, 5 milliamp plus 0 would be equal to 0, which means 5 milliamp has to be equal to 0, and that's obviously wrong. So um, both of these diodes could not be off at the same time. Uh, with that, uh, there's actually one more assumption that we can quickly uh, invalidate, and that would be for this diode down here to be off. Uh, regardless of this uh, status of the other diode and the reason is that if this diode is off then I um, the 5 milliamp plus I1 is equal to 0 in other words I1 equal to minus 5 milliamp in other words all the 5 milliamp has to move upward uh, and go through the 2k and this diode but we know a reverse uh, biased uh, diode cannot pass current and therefore this diode down here being off also is not a valid assumption. So we actually only left with two assumptions to test and those two would be for this top diode to be on or off. Now whether or not that that's the case actually happens to be a function of what this resistor R uh, is. Now with that uh, one thing we can do, we can actually find the condition uh, for which uh, this diode actually switches from being on to off or the other way around, off to on. In other words, we're going to look for uh, right at the moment where the diode turns on and at which point the current I1 would be still zero even though the diode is on the current at first would be zero. So let me uh, clarify this. In other words, if I draw the kind of idealized, not fully idealized, but at least a simplified uh, IV curve of a diode that we use, uh, it would be, if you recall, would be something like this. So it would, the current would be zero all the way to 0.7 uh, volts and then it becomes a constant 0.7 volts. So this is IV care for the diode. Uh, so this is current and this is the voltage. Now when the diode turns on it would be right this point and at this point at first the current is actually still zero and after that the current starts increasing. So basically I could look for that specific point where the diode voltage, the voltage across the diode is actually 0.7 volt. In other words, I can replace this diode, top diode right here, with a 
voltage source equal to 0.7 volt, but then the current is still zero. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume that this diode, the model that I can use for this diode, is a 0.7 volt source, and then go about solving this circuit, and I know that this diode down here is also on, always on, that one we already established, so that's also 0.7, but I'm also on top of that assume that I1 is equal to zero, in order to actually calculate right where that diode is gonna turn on. So let's start analysis. So that's, uh, that uh, is already labeled as VA, uh, that's 5 volt, that's minus 5, that's 10. And I'm going to here write uh, V1 for this node and V2 for this node. Now there's uh, a mistake that some people make and I want to point this out. And they assume that the voltage actually on the other side, I, know, I don't know why, why exactly that actually happens. But uh, there's this confusion that you can actually assume that VA is equal to 10 volts. Um, basically ignoring the current source. Uh, I don't understand why one would make such an assumption, but anyway, make sure that you are not confused. The current source, um, you can't say anything about, like there's no equation that defines what the voltage across the current source is, but definitely you can't assume that that voltage drop is zero. Uh, you can't make any statement for that matter, about the voltage across it. So this voltage, you just have to label, label it as something and then start writing your uh, equations. Uh, what you do know or about the current source is the current that is passing through it and it's equal to five milliamp. That's basically the equation for the current source. So we're gonna start writing uh, KCL and there's only one KCL, but then we know that I1 is equal to zero. So my KCL basically turns into five plus zero is equal to I2, which means now at this point, I2 is also equal to five milliamp. Now, since I use uh, milliamp as the uh, unit for current, I can actually work with the resistors being in the kilo ohm uh, unit. And then uh, continue with the equations for components. Now for the voltage source on top, uh, we have uh, five minus V1, is equal to 0.7 uh, for the resistor 2k resistor we have uh, 0 is equal to v1 minus va divided by 2 which quickly means that actually va is equal to also v1 then we move on to the equation for this source down here which means va minus v2 is equal to 0.7 volts and then finally for the resistor we have i2 is equal to v2 minus minus 5 divided by r so again uh, the unknown here uh, is the resistor down here i'm looking for the resistance that actually puts us right here on the edge on the knee of the diode top here up here and it turns on uh, and for that matter I do know therefore what the current up here is. So I1 is not an unknown, but R is. But you, you, you notice that um, our approach is now gonna change uh, based on what is known and what's unknown. We always follow the same algorithm. So with that, uh, now I know I2 is equal to five. Uh, from this one, I know V1 is equal to 4.3. And therefore, I know VA also is equal to 4.3. And therefore, from this equation at this point, I know V2 would be 4.3 minus 0.7. And that is uh, 3.6 volts. And then finally, I take 5 from up here, put it here, V2, 3.6. Uh, plus 5 divided by R, therefore R is equal to 8.6 divided by 5 milliamp. So that's the value of the resistor 
that puts us right at the edge of the uh, diode on top turning on or off and now if you want to know what the direction is like what happens if it's greater or smaller if the resistance is actually larger then this voltage is going to go up and therefore this voltage is going to go up and as a result the diode is up here is going to turn off if the resistance down here goes down the voltage here goes down and therefore the, the diode is going to turn on you can test that by putting this time as opposed to assuming that the, the diode is on or off you can actually with this what we just tested you can put 1k here which is definitely less than the value that we find here found here and test to make sure to see actually uh, for ourselves that the diode at that point would be on and then change that and put a 2 kilo ohm here which is definitely larger than the resistance that we've calculated and this time uh, basically test to see that actually the diode up here would turn off um, it's it's pretty easy to test that I'll show you for example for the 2k I'm going to turn that and assume the diode is off so all the current that goes in is going to actually go here uh, and it would be the same current therefore 5 milliamps is going to pass through that 2k and therefore you're going to get 10 volt voltage drop across this resistance so therefore this voltage up here becomes plus 5 and then the diode is on so this would be 5.7 and immediately when this is 5.7 you can clearly see that at that point actually V1 uh, if I1 is 0 also is 5.7 which means that the, for this diode the cathode has a higher voltage than the anode and therefore our assumption for that diode to be off was correct and the other way around for the values less than this you can see that if you assume that the diode is on then you can go back and uh, check for the uh, voltage here and see that it would be accurate to assume that is actually on in other words there is current passing at that point there has to be current passing at that point through that diode um, there is one thing that now it's outside the uh, basically um, scope of this question but you can't keep on increasing the resistance here and assume that the circuit is just going to work fine actually um, the voltage VA cannot go above 10 volt and you still assume that the current source uh, is uh, going to function um, properly uh, as you may imagine generally speaking we know that the current goes from higher potentials to lower potentials and therefore uh, for VA to be anything above 10 volt and still current going from 10 volt to something higher than 10 volt that would be actually uh, not possible this uh, voltage here actually not cannot even get close to uh, 10 volt in reality so that's just something extra for you to maybe think about great uh, thank you for your attention and see you in the next videos